Welcome back, friends, to the Hour of Power, week two. I have a new friend to introduce you to. Oh, look at her. Isn't she amazing? She is an ostrich. And Miss Castillo kind of thinks that an ostrich is my spirit animal. So she's very special to me. And her name is Kisses. Kisses Mastillo. I want you to think for a minute about the name Mrs. Castillo and the name Kisses Mastillo. Do you see what I did there? I want you to check out uh, word games and tongue twisters to, for a little lesson in phoneme substitution, and we're going to come up with your hour of power super name. Okay, so check that out, and I'll be joined by Kisses Mastillo over there. I also am hoping that you guys all got your prize or prizes from week one and that you have those letter cards and there are some new activities in Letter Town to check out, some suggested activities that you can do with those letter cards that are fun and there'll be there will be more to come. There also are five new letters and sounds for you to learn in Letter Town, so be sure you visit that. Our song is all finished, and there's a button on the front page of Hour of Power where you can click on that song and listen to it. And in the next couple of weeks, Kisses and I will be coming back with a music video for that song so that you can join us and sing along. Today, I want to share with you, we're going to be, this whole month, we're going to be talking about food from around the world. And the story that I want to share with you tonight is stone soup. Have you ever heard the story stone soup? Hmm. Okay, so this is a beautiful story that I got right here from my school library, and it's called stone soup. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Sue traveled along a mountain road they talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes one happy, Sue? asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, let's find out. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of a village below. They could not see from so high up above that the village had been through many hard times. Famine. Do you know what famine means? It means starvation. Famine, floods, and war had made the villagers weary and untrusting of strangers. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. You can see the village down below. You can barely see it in the fog. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer, a tea merchant, a scholar, a seamstress, a doctor, a carpenter, and many others, but they had little to do with one another. Look at all of them here. Can you see what each one does? When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gate to greet them. And when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. What a beautiful village. I wonder where this story takes place. Where do you think? I think we're going to have to add a map to our Hour of Power where we can identify where all the stories have come from. The monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on a second door, and the same thing happened. It happened again and again, from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. 
What are you doing? she asked. We are gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making a fire, said Hawk. We are making stone soup, and we need three round smooth stones, said Sue. The little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue. But this very small pot won't make much, the, won't make much I'm afraid. My mother has a bigger pot, said the girl. I love the kitty there that's joining them. I have a kitty that looks kind of like that. The little girl ran home. She started to take a pot. Her mother asked what she was doing. The three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. The monks poked the coals. As the smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire and the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was about. Of course, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper, said Hawk. That is true, said Locke, as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones but we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Sue took a taste. The last time we had soup stones of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few. And off she ran, she returned with as many carrots as they as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Do you think it would be better with onions? asked Hawk. Oh yes, maybe an onion would taste good, said a farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions, and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. Now that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads as the smell was very agreeable. But if only we had some mushrooms, said Sue, rubbing his chin. Several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and cabbages. Something magical began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soap, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one villager, and bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear and mung beans and yams, cried some others, and taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried the other villagers. Garlic, ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out. And off they ran, returning with all that they could carry. The monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled, how good it would taste, how giving the villagers had become. At last, the soup was ready. The villagers gathered together. They brought rice and steamed buns. They brought lychee nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink and they lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this in for as long as anyone could remember. That looks like quite a feast. After the banquet, they told stories and sang songs and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them very comfortable places to sleep. 
Oh, look at, they're doing a puppet show. I love puppets. Those are called shadow puppets. That might be a fun thing for us to do sometime as a little art project for Hour of Power. I'll have to think about that. In the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered together near the willows to say farewell. Thank you for having us as your guests, said the monks. You have been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making stone soup. Okay, that's the last page. So one of the things that I want you to learn how to do is a five finger summary. It's so much fun. And I will in some of my read alouds do a five finger summary with you, but let's try to do that. Put up your hand like this, okay? The first on our thumb, we're gonna talk about where this story take, takes place. Where do you think this story takes place? Certainly takes place in a village. I also think that the village is in China. So the, the setting, or where the story takes place and when is in China in a small village. This finger is for the characters or who. Who is in this story? That's called the characters. So we had the monks. It was Hawk and Locke and Sue and the villagers and that cute little kitty cat. Okay. Then we can tell take details from the beginning middle and end. So in the beginning of the story, the monks were searching for happiness and they were up in the mountain and they spied a small village down in the valley below the mountains. So they walked down there and at first everybody shut their doors and windows and wouldn't come out. So they decided to make stone soup. That's the middle. So they decided to make stone soup and at first just the little girl came out and she said, asked if they said they might need a bigger pot and she volunteered one. So that was how it started. And then other people started bringing things to add to the soup. Do you remember all the things that they added? I remember some of them, carrots and onions and spices and salt and pepper and mushrooms, all kinds of things. What are the other things that you remember? And then finally, everybody enjoyed the soup together and they had a big feast and they lit lanterns and they afterwards enjoyed the monks to come in and have a visit and stay with them and they made puppets. Those that is a five finger summary. And that summarizes the story. And each one of these things that we talked about on our fingers are the key details. And that's what our learning standard is right now for this month is key details. So try a five finger summary. Another thing that I wanna to talk to you about is theme or message. Does this story seem to teach you a lesson about something? I want you to think, and you might even rewind and go back and re-listen to this story, and then ask your family, what do you think the theme or the message is that the author was trying to teach you in this story? If you think you know, that's our secret word for the day. I want you to write down what you think the theme of Stone Soup was. So what do you think the theme was or the message that the author was trying to teach you? Write that on a piece of paper and your name and your teacher's name and turn it into the box at school and you're going to get a prize. Okay. Last week we had a joke too. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. Do you get it? A gummy bear. So gums are the pink parts in your, in your mouth above your teeth. So a bear who has no teeth only has gums. So it's a gummy bear, just like the gummy bears that we eat. It's kind of funny. Okay. Well, I think that's enough for today. Goodbye from Kisses and from Miss Castillo. And thank you for joining us for the Hour of Power. Check out, we've got all kinds of new things and every week we're gonna be adding new buttons with new secret codes and fun things to find. So go search around and see what you can watch and, and come up with. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.